Hello everyone, I'm here to review Fade by Lisa McMahon. Now if you are not familiar with the Dreamcatchers trilogy or even the first book, Wake, I'm going to ask you to click the link in the description box below. It'll say Wake Review and that will give you a little bit of information on what this trilogy is about because I'm only going to focus on Fade in this review. So this starts off with the fact that Janie has joined Cable in working as undercover narcs or basically just undercover officers for the police department. And unfortunately, Janie and Cable are put into a very strenuous situation because it does affect their relationship because they have to remain those separate people not really caring much about each other during the beginning of this still because they can't let anyone at the school know that they are actually dating and what happens is they're put into this strenuous situation not only in their relationship but at school when the assignment they get put in is with regards to teachers who are preying on the students sexually and if you guys are not aware from the first book, if you haven't read it, or you did read it, I should say, uh, you do know that that was more of a mature-themed book. This one is a little higher than that. This deals with a lot of very, very, very strongly mature-themed and I'm surprised that this is still a young adult novel with the themes that are involved in this. But the thing is, I've never actually finished the second book in the trilogy where it ends in such a way. Um, oh man, I don't know how to explain it to you guys, but if you read Fade, just make sure you have the third book on hand. I finished this yesterday. And I literally wanted to pick up Gone right away. And I've put off picking it up so that I could review this for you guys first. And this is just one book that literally... I don't know how to explain it. How is it that I've read three books by Lisa McMahon and I feel like she is an author that I just want to keep reading and rereading her novels. I think she is one author that I haven't even finished the trilogy and I know I want to go back and read all of her novels yet again and I want to pick up her other novels she's published because of how amazing the writing is. Now one thing that's interesting with this writing is the fact that you get further involved in the actual case that Janie is working on. You also get involved further in Janie and Cable's relationship and you get to see the ups and downs of that. Because they have had such a traumatic upbringing, you kind of see how they're still fighting with how to make it work because they're so used to just themselves, not worrying about that other side of a relationship that it, they're having to learn how to make it knit together, how to make it work. And you're also put into the loop with regards to Janie's ability even further and oh you guys read this book and come back and watch this next part because I have some spoilery stuff that I need to get off of my chest with regards to this book so go read it and come back like immediately after you finish so that we can discuss because I need to Okay, so in this one, we are dealing with really mature themes. A couple things that I didn't mention was the fact that um, Janie and Cable do end up having sex. And I haven't actually read a young adult novel that actually, it doesn't go into detail, but it is implied to the fact that you know that there's nothing else that's going to happen in those next little blanks that you don't see any writing for. And on top of that, you're dealing with a very strenuous situation with regards to teachers who are getting involved sexually with their students. And you're kind of sitting there thinking, there's no way that Lisa McMahon is going to go there, but she does. And you understand with Janie, like the way that the teacher is coming across you get really creeped out by it it's one where your your skin just crawls the minute that he puts his hand on her shoulder or on her back or something and you just 
you cringe and you'll understand when she says I really want to beat him up that you understand you want to do it too because it's so inappropriate what he's doing and then at the party when she eats the meatballs and starts talking about how she's really thirsty and hungry and I realized then that she'd probably had the date rape drug as well as a lot of the other kids that were there and then you realize it's GHB from the chemicals after she wakes up but the thing is you see everything going on in this party and you see these three teachers and you think are you serious are you serious this can't be happening and you literally see how Janie's character is reacting to being drugged and you just think this can't be happening and then finally when she's out on the deck she just beats up that one teacher and then she pokes the other one in the eyes and I was thinking thank you thank you because seriously the things that went on there like the way that they touched her so inappropriately during that party you just it makes you sick to your stomach and then the next morning when she mentioned she can't really remember anything you feel horrible because you remember what happens to her character you remember how her character felt and it's just oh uh, oh you remember you are that little piece of the subconscious brain that remembers what happened at that party but no one else in this story is going to remember and it just breaks your heart and literally when Janie gets out and she starts second guessing things and she thinks nothing can get worse Nothing's going to be worse with regards to Cable's character just leaving her alone, not talking to her, and just having to come to terms himself with how to deal with Janie and how to deal with this relationship and these things that he feels. And then she reads the book, the journal, that she was given by Miss Steuben, and she starts reading through the great things. But here's the thing, partway through this story, when she was sitting there talking to her the first time, I got thinking, Miss Dubin's blind, but she wasn't when she was younger. So does that mean that she's losing her sight? That she lost her sight? That like with having those blackouts that maybe like from the start you're thinking okay she's squinting at things those blackouts are a little longer a little mm, harsher to get out of and then I'm like no you can't do that and then Lisa McMahon just writes it and you think this can't be and she talks about driving being unsafe and you realize in this that it is it happens again the dream reaches her through that door in the car like in the first one and she could have killed people and that's just horrible and then she mentions with regards to her sight when it disappeared and you just I just started weeping then because ah uh, to be told then and then she mentions with regards to her hands with and I didn't even clue in like her hands go numb and her feet go numb and oh it just oh it just breaks you so much hearing about this with regards to Janie's character and the fact that she and Cable are gonna have to deal with it and then she goes to Cable and she starts just trying to figure out if it was because of the fact of what happened at the party and you find out it's because he knows he can't just protect her, he can't just keep her in a box and have her all to himself. And then he realizes, or actually he shares with her that he knows she's going blind. And what else is worse, because he wants to be prepared, but he's going to be there for her. And literally, I'm sitting there thinking, I don't know what's going to happen and gone, but I'm so scared. And I just feel horrible. 
but I just want to find out what's happening. And then at the end, graduation comes. This is the first time I think I've read a young adult novel where it's in the middle of the series and the characters graduate from high school. Has anybody else read a book like that? Because honestly, I have not read a book where the characters graduate mid-trilogy from high school. Um, yes. I love the fact that Miss, or Chief Kominsky, is there with her husband at the graduation for Cable and for Janie because you know neither of their family is there. Like, Cable's brother and his wife are there, but there's no one there for Janie besides the captain. Um, but then she graduates, and then she starts making her way towards the door, and you get to the last line in this book. Hold on. The custodian comes by with a broom, and he smiles at her. Janie nods and smiles in return, and he begins sweeping the wood-floored aisles that most often serve as a basketball court. And then the lights fade a bit. Janie blinks and leans against the wall just in case, but it's no one's dream. It's just the end of some things and the beginning of others. Ugh. Oh, that part in the book just got me. I just broke down right then and there. I put the book down, I put my head in my hand. One thing with regards to this story, with regards to Miss Steuben in particular, she mentioned that she started with dream catching at the age of 16. And the interesting thing there is the fact that Janie started even earlier than that. She was eight years old when she started dream catching, which means all of these times that she basically told her, this is the age that I lost my sight, this is when I lost my like movement of my hands and feet, you think like there's almost, almost a 10 year difference between when things started for Janie and when they started for Miss Steuben and the other ones that were dream catching with her. I have no idea what's in store in Gone, but I feel like I need a hug right now from finishing this book. Like a great big hug because I don't know what's going to happen in Gone. I have no idea, but seriously, I need to know. I'm so glad I have gone because I'm going to read it. Um, let me know what you guys thought of Fade. Uh, if you've read this far, I'm sorry you've been spoiled. Uh, go and read the series. Until then, go and pick up a random book and read, or go and pick up the Wake Trilogy and read that because... Wow. Okay. Bye.